So uh, my name's James. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, letting me come to speak here this evening um, on our research in NUI Galway, or University of Ireland Galway now, actually. It's hard to keep track with the change. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the physiology department. Um, and we're looking at exploring ways that we can use ultrasound to modulate neurons and its potential treatment in, in epilepsy. So I'm uh, just going to start off with basically a brief introduction. So as we all know from uh, previous conversations before this, that uh, epilepsy can be caused by genetics, or there can be a, a metabolic disturbance or a structural disturbance uh, caused by uh, brain injuries or things like that. And basically, the incidence at the moment is up to 1% uh, of the population of Ireland. Um, so it affects quite a, quite a few people, as we know. And its effects uh, is primarily causing uh, reoccurring seizures. And this, uh, along with hypersynchronized discharges within the brain, can really impact uh, the quality of life of, of patients. Um, so currently, this treatment, or epilepsy, is being treated with a potent uh, pharmaceutical drugs. Some of them, as we've seen before, have had very beneficial effects uh, to people uh, suffer from epilepsy, but a lot of the time under, they say not uh, guidance from the clinician and stuff, they can have uh, negative side effects like drowsiness, uh, stomach sickness, and, and the likes as, as uh, was alluded to earlier. So a little bit on the background of the research uh, we are exploring. So we're looking at the potential of ultrasound as a means to modulate neurons. So as we know, uh, ultrasound is currently being used in the clinic regularly, for example, to image babies within the, uh, the stomach of pregnant women. Uh, so basically, it involves uh, a speaker or a sound wave is sent into the body through the tissue. This is reflected back uh, to like a a sensor which picks up these sound waves, and this is how the image is basically generated um, on the screen. So this has been used for many years now, so we know ultrasound is in fact FDA improved and it's uh, safe to be used at the correct uh, energy levels. Um, as well as that, uh, there's the emergence of uh, thermal ablation for certain, uh, let's say, cancers within the, the brain, so they're currently using uh, focused ultrasound as a means to target uh, brain regions specifically, where they can basically uh, ablate that region and take away the cancer. Or as you can see here, there's uh, currently enrolled clinical trials at the moment um, where they're looking at a focal epilepsy and the use of uh, ultrasound and basically exploring this technique as a means to uh, alleviate the ep epileptic uh, syndromes. So, and finally, uh, more recent research in this area is looking at the use of ultrasound as a way to uh, modulate neurons. So this modulate is just a fancy way of saying controlling. Uh, so I, to turn them on, so to cause uh, action or to uh, turn them off, to silence them so you don't get a reoccurring firing. So at the moment, uh, people have primarily been focused on uh, peripheral nerve neuromodulation which basically is the nerves that are outside of your brain and spinal cord. And uh, these uh, at recent work there has been sh shown that they can use this uh, ultrasound neuromodulation as a means to uh, control the, the release of things from the liver. In this case, it was uh, insulin, but it basically it was a study that showed the potential of ultrasounds as a way to turn on and off uh, neurons within the, the peripheral nervous system. So the aim of this project uh, is to develop an ultrasound stimulation platform uh, that can be used to uh, <clears throat> study the response of neurons to ultrasound. Um, and this will primarily be used to look at the response of ultrasound, or sorry, cells to different ultrasound stimulation uh, paradigms. And, and the overall goal of this is to discover and use uh, the receptors and ion channels that are found in this uh, benchtop research, uh, which will have potential applications. Sorry, I just see that last line is gone there, but I think we can read the end of it. Um, 
basically uh, the discovery of new and use of new ion channels can be used to uh, as a tool to specifically modulate uh, excitable cells. So uh, the previous stuff we've been talking about this evening I've noticed is uh, on the pharmacological side or is uh, very close to clinical translation or in, in clinical trials, whereas uh, this project is more on the bench, so we call it a in vitro. Basically, we take cells, um, we keep them in an incubator, we take them from animal models, for example, uh, the brains of rodents. Uh, we isolate these cells, and then we look at uh, the response of these cells using uh, primarily two electrophysiology techniques. Well, one of them being um, basically we, we record the electrical activity of uh, cells on neurons using um, microelectrode arrays, as well as that uh, we use a technique that's called calcium imaging, which I'll uh, allude to a little bit further, but essentially uh, we uh, grow cells in, in a dish. Uh, we add a dye that is able, allows us using a microscope to visualize when the cells are turned on or turned off, and how, how frequently or how much they are turned on and turned off, uh, a technique called uh, calcium signaling dynamics. So for the past while, um, we've been trying to set up a, a system in, in the Quinlan lab where we were able to uh, simultaneously record uh, this change in, in uh, the calcium, as I mentioned before, yeah, using fluorescent microscopy. So we use dyes and a microscope, and we look for these cells uh, under the microscope. And basically, we take a sophisticated video as a means to uh, look at how these cells change over time. Um, so in essence, that is because when neurons or cells become active, uh, there is a movement of a, a common ion that we know called calcium into the cell. And that basically is how the cell is uh, sending these uh, electrical firing patterns. So that's why we're tracking uh, the change in light, which is associated with this ion uh, calcium. And then along with that, uh, we have set up a microelectrode array, which is a fancy way of saying we grow neurons and cells on a dish that has a loads of little uh, electrodes or pickups that basically is able to listen to the, the sound or the electrical noise of, of the cells um, in real time, basically. So we're able, again, to get a recording of what is happening within these cells over, over time. So just some uh, emergent results, basically, from, from this research. So first of all, um, the main groundwork has been established in setting up this microscope electrophysiology Oh, sorry, I might have alluded to the most important part of this. So if you look at the bottom image there as well, um, that thing that's poking up, as it says, it's the ultrasound transducer. So this is where the sound energy is uh, going to be focused, basically up at, the, or is focused up at the cells. And uh, the wire leading out from there uh, is, is led to uh, a fancy speaker, they say, where we can adjust the, the frequency, which is the how often and the amplitude of the signal. So we're, able, we're basically have a means to screen different uh, ultrasound parameters. So, so far, um, we've been working on primary cortical neurons from uh, rodents. As This is um, as close as we can get. So we have uh, cell lines, and then we have primary cells from animals, which is as close as we can get to human studies. Um, or, not, or human cells, and it allows us basically with the cell model that has all the same physiological or normal characteristics as uh, human cells, we're able to culture these cells and look for specific ion channels or uh, receptors on the cell that are known to be responsive to ultrasound. So for example here, we have a channel called uh, trip 4 which is in green. Um, this, ion, this receptor is usually found within uh, peripheral nerves, but we've seen that this is also uh, found within these cortical neurons, uh, which is 
kind of leading us down a path to explore the potential of this ion channel as a, a means to uh, modulate electrical activity. So then in the middle, this is just a, another microscope image of these uh, neurons. They're growing on these pickup microelectrode arrays. And this has allowed us basically to take recordings of these uh, neurons over time. So uh, you can see on the graph there on the right hand side, we have 60 different electrodes that are, each one of them are picking up the signals from these neurons uh, every second. And basically we do that over the period of, of 10 minutes. And this allows us to uh, basically track the electrical activity of these neurons um, in vitro. So I'm hoping this video will work for you as well, uh, but I know it's a bit temperamental on this. So in this format, in the slideshow format, but uh, essentially what we have here on the right-hand side in black and white is the calcium imaging that, that I was referring to earlier. So each one of these uh, lighter images or light spots you can see in this uh, black image is the, the center of a, a neuron or a neural cells basically uh, within the brain, not within the brain, sorry, uh, extracted from the brain. And basically this video, if it could play, did it change in brightness there? For, I don't, I don't, yeah. So basically, that was run over uh, 600 seconds there, which is uh, 10 minutes basically. And uh, this setup here allows us basically to look at the electrical activity of the cells uh, in response to initially ultrasound. And then we use uh, a drug called capsaicin, which is basically comes from chili spice uh, as a positive control, let's say, as a way, because we know that neurons will respond to this chemical uh, as a positive control to confirm that uh, basically these cells are are physiologically functioning uh, and relevant. So on the the figure on the right hand side here, basically we have a the initial parameter optimization. So there was a lot of parameters within ultrasound that we don't talk about. You can think about how loud it is or how frequent it is, but there's pulse reputation rates and duty cycles and uh, many other parameters that have to be kind of uh, optimized first before we can get a result. So basically this is a demonstration of how, uh, what you see in the from the red graph is basically every time that sound is turned on at each one of these uh, voltages, uh, you can see a response in the, the calcium activity, uh, which represents uh, the activation of cells. So a uh, question you might be asked, why are we trying to activate cells as opposed to like turn off cell firing? Well, the, basically it's um, important that we're able to know that the, the engineering part of the ultrasound is working. So we use activation of cells as a way of screening whether the whole setup uh, is working and then we can focus on with the help of uh, ion channels ways that we can suppress or control the, the electrical activity of neurons so it's kind of a back to front approach but it's necessary to set up this uh, benchtop system. So in conclusion uh, so far we've uh, established from what I know the first benchtop ultrasound stimulation system uh, within Ireland, which can be used as a platform basically to screen uh, for ion channels and ultrasound uh, power. Um, and this is along with the electrophysiology recording setup and the calcium imaging that I alluded to. Um, yep, so we've created a platform for the screening of uh, different cells, receptors, as well as that this setup can be used as, a, as I mentioned, the the capsaicin there was a positive control. It could be used to test different drugs to see how their effects on uh, neural activity. Um, so as well as that, we, the Quinlan lab itself has lots of protocols established where we can quickly crunch down these numbers because all these uh, images of calcium and electrophysiology, it's, it's, it's very big data. So we have a way now where we can basically represent it like like I have there uh, on a graph to show the fluctuations uh, in cellular activity. 
And yep, yeah, we've established new methods in primary cell isolation, as well as other molecular techniques that we need to produce these uh, ion channels. So finally, I'd like to conclude by uh, thanking everyone here. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks to Epilepsy Ireland, IRC, Enterprise Ireland, and NUI Galway. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thanks. <laughs>